a prince named Bhumipal becomes king of a modern nation. He has endured some of Thailand's most tumultuous times to become their longest ruling monarch. A king who rules with compassion. A man loved above all. In 1992, Thailand is caught in one of its worst political demonstrations in almost 20 years. Protests demanding the resignation of an unelected prime minister have erupted into a violent four-day military clampdown. As the situation spirals out of control, political analysts believe the country is on the brink of civil war. until one man steps forward. In one of the country's most dramatic televised scenes, King Bhumipal, the King of Thailand, is seen reprimanding Prime Minister Suchenda and the leader of the protests, Chon Long. <laughs> King Bhumipon's single-handed intervention pulls the country back from the brink of a political calamity and paves the way for talks that will lead to a peaceful solution. Although the Thai king holds no political power, his status among his people has been described as almost godlike. To not obey the king when he steps in would be political and social suicide. For centuries, Thais have accepted the moral authority of the king without question. The universal respect and love for King Bhumipon by his people is a phenomenon almost unequaled anywhere else in the world today. <laughs> But who is this man they know as king, currently the longest reigning monarch in the world? And how has he managed to maintain the respect and adoration of his subjects throughout his reign? Prince Bhumipon was born on 5th December 1927 in Cambridge, Massachusetts in the United States. His father was Prince Mahidorn Aduyade and his mother Mong Songwan. In an almost prophetic manner, King Prajadipak, Prince Mahidorn's half-brother, names the newborn prince Bhumipon, the great strength of the land. As Siam opens up to Western technology and ideas, Prince Bhumipon's father, 24-year-old Prince Mahidorn, is sent abroad to study medicine in the United States. Two years later, he meets a nursing student at Hartford, Connecticut. Her name is Song Wan, and she would become Prince Bhumipon's mother. Prince Mahidorn had fallen in love with Song Wan, a commoner, and wanted to marry her. But it was considered unconventional for royalty to marry outside of their lineage. Prince Mahidorn is undeterred by the royal protocol and marries Song Wan on 10 September 1920 at Sapratum Palace, Thailand. His new bride is given a royal title and becomes known as Mong Song Wan. The newlyweds return to the United States and live a modest lifestyle in an apartment in Longwood Avenue, Boston. They have three children, including a young prince, Bhumipon. 
When Meng Zongwan completes her studies as a nurse, and after almost eight years away, the royal family decides it's time to go home. In 1928, they moved back to live at Sapratum Palace with Prince Bumipom's grandmother, Queen Sawang Vatana. The serenity of Sapratum is magical. Prince Mahidorn and his family happily settle down. However, their joy is short-lived. The hard-working prince is diagnosed with a disease of the kidneys and starts to become frail. Then, on 24th September 1929, Prince Mahidorn tragically passes away. Young Prince Bumipuan is barely two years old. It's a huge blow to Mang Sang Wan, who becomes a widow at not even 29. And although the challenges seem overwhelming, she is determined to become a loving and nurturing mother to her three raising them by herself. Young Prince Bumipon and his siblings grow up in an environment of fun and stimulation. Mong Sung Wan uses play to help her children learn about the world around them. One game Prince Bumipon remembers well into adulthood involved water. The three-year-old Bumipon and his elder brother dug a passage mimicking a canal into which water was poured. The brothers created their own mini irrigation system lining it with twigs along the side to hold the soil together. It would prove the very beginnings of King Bumipon's lifelong interest in soil conservation and the need to be close to the land. As Prince Bumipan spends his carefree childhood playing and experimenting within the protected walls of Sapratun, outside the palace gates, Siam is undergoing a dramatic transformation. On June 24, 1932, a bloodless coup ends 150 years of absolute monarchic rule under the royal house of Chakri. Siam now adopts a constitutional monarchy with the king remaining as head of state. Mong Sang Wan wants to move her children away from the political upheavals in Siam and she decides that Losan would be the perfect refuge. Switzerland would become a safe haven for the young royals and they would spend most of their childhood away from Thailand. Prince Ananda, Prince Bumipon's elder brother, was particularly fond of Switzerland. As his older sister, Princess Galliani, later observed, it was a democratic state which knew no monarchic rule, making them commoners like everyone else. Wanting to instill a sense of self-reliance in her children, Mong Song Wan enrolls Prince Bumipon and his elder brother Prince Ananda in a boarding school for foreign students called École Nouvelle de la Suisse Romande. They study liberal arts and Prince Bumipon took French, German and English lessons. Although the royal family are far away in peaceful Switzerland, the tides of change back home in Siam would soon reach their shores.
In 1935, the current king of Siam, Prajadipak, abdicates while living in England. When King Prajadipak, having no children of his own, Bhumipon's elder brother, Prince Ananda, becomes next in line to accede to the throne. At the innocent age of nine, the weight of a nation now falls firmly upon the young prince's shoulders. At the age of nine, Prince Ananda becomes king of Siam. As a mother, Meng Sung Wan is apprehensive about her child taking on such responsibilities at such a young age. She wants her children to have a normal childhood. She doesn't want her young children to be taken out of school and request to continue living in Switzerland. The government agrees that the young royals can remain in Europe for the time being. Even though her son is now a ruling monarch, Meng Sung Wan continues to impart life values to her young children from the Switzerland setting. She sees to it that the new King Ananda and his siblings are not exempt from carrying out simple housekeeping chores like tidying their bedrooms and sweeping up the house. In November 1938, after four attempts by the Siamese government to invite the royal family back, Meng Sung Wan and young King Ananda temporarily returned to Thailand. It's a joyous occasion and people from all over the country turn up to welcome their new king. Once again, King Ananda is accompanied by his younger brother, Bhumipan, who affectionately becomes known as the Bespectacled Prince. But it's a fleeting visit by the young king. After two months, he goes back to Lausanne to continue his studies. Within a year of arriving on European soil, World War II breaks out. Although Switzerland manages to escape the carnage endured by neighboring France, Germany, and Italy, it is not exempt from its own wartime suffering. Rationing becomes part of everyday life, and the royal family has to live meagerly like everyone else. King Ananda and his younger brother cycle to school as gasoline was in severe shortage. Growing up, the king has an extremely deep bond with his younger brother Bumipon, his closest companion. Going almost everywhere together, the best buddies feel almost inseparable. They share passions in almost everything, from modeling ships to building their own toys. By the time Prince Bumipon was eight, he had already developed a love for construction. He was inspired by an old Buddhist script, Gate Ramate, those who delight themselves make their own things. When the pair of them weren't modeling or building, they shared another passion that would bring them even closer together. Music. The brothers first learned to play the saxophone and clarinet from a French musician named Wybridge. This would mark the beginnings of a lifelong passion for Prince Bumipon, who would continue to play even after becoming king. 
Having been exposed to a variety of instruments and musical genres, Prince Bumi Pond shows a keen interest in jazz after hearing a band play during a family holiday. As his appreciation for jazz deepens, Prince Bumipon starts collecting jazz records. Mong Sang Wan, meanwhile, sees to it that Prince Bumipon has to dig into his own pockets to pay for his musical meanderings. She does not want her children to be spoiled. To this day, music remains a big part of King Bumipon's life. And he once said, jazz or no jazz, music is a part of me. His love for music soon moves from playing to composition. And at the age of 18, King Bumipon composes his first jazz song, Candlelight Blues. Years later, the king would turn his love of music into a way of helping the public. Using a shortwave transmitter, he formed a radio station known as Ah Saw. He and his band would often perform live on radio, taking the opportunity to call out to his people for donations in a number of relief projects. In 1945, following the end of World War II, King Ananda makes another trip home. His brother, Prince Bumipon, accompanies him as usual. Although Thailand has been spared the worst of the war in Asia, relationships have grown tense between Thailand's Chinese and Thai population, following the government's decision to allow Japan to use their country as a stepping stone to get to Malaysia and ultimately Singapore. The Chinese, among the most heavily persecuted race during World War II, consider the Thais collaborators of the Japanese. Despite the potential dangers, King Ananda and Bumipan visit Sumping District, home to the Chinese in Bangkok. It is during this visit that Prince Bumipan now a skilled photographer, starts documenting their journey along the way. Any tensions are cast aside as the Chinese community give the young royals a warm welcome. But despite the welcome, political turmoil continues to threaten the monarchy in the coming months. And joy soon turns to tragedy. On 9th June 1946, in an incident unresolved to this day, King Ananda dies from a mysterious gunshot at home in his bed. It is a massive shock to the nation who unite to mourn the loss of their beloved king. The country has lost a king but Prince Bumipan has lost his best friend and beloved brother. The National Assembly immediately meets and makes a unanimous decision to name Prince Bumipan King. Although devastated, he accedes to the throne the same day. By the age of only 18, the bespectacled Prince Bumipan becomes Rama IX, King of Thailand. On 18th August 1946, newly appointed King Bumipan 
pays his last respects to his late brother, who died mysteriously from a gunshot in his own home. Still in mourning, however, King Bhumipan has to return to Switzerland to continue his studies. He feels torn at the thought of abandoning his people at such a critical time, but promises he will return. The young king returns to his studies at the University of Lausanne. Although deeply passionate about science, he changes his course of study to law, political and social science, subjects he feels would be more relevant to his role as king. Young King Bhumipan also focuses on increasing his fluency in English, German, French and Latin, knowing these will complement his role as a statesman. <laughs> As the new king comes of age, he falls for the daughter of a leading Thai diplomat in Europe, Mom Rajawangsi Sirikit Kiriyagon. She is studying in Europe when they first meet at Fontainebleau in Paris. The young couple soon get engaged on 19th July 1949. In a warm and sentimental gesture, King Bhumipan gives his fiancée the engagement ring that belonged to his parents. The much anticipated royal wedding finally takes place on 28th April 1950 at Srapatum Palace, Bangkok. The couple sign the marriage register without listing their occupations and pay a 10 baht registration fee. Thailand welcomes their new Queen Sirikit, who would become King Bhumipan's constant companion. May 1950, a week later after his marriage, King Bhumipan is coronated according to the traditions of the Grand Palace. In an ancient rite of purification, the king takes a ceremonial bath seated facing east while water is poured down his shoulders. For the first time, the king wears the symbolic great crown of victory weighing a hefty 7.3 kilograms, studded with diamonds and jewels. The Queen is elevated to the title of Royal Consort to Her Majesty Queen Sirikit. In the last of the ceremonies, the King is carried in his royal seat to the Temple of the Emerald Buddha, where senior monks wait to offer prayers. Thai kings have ruled for centuries according to Buddhist principles and are often seen as Thamaraja, or kings of righteousness. Carrying on the expectations of this ancient tradition, King Bhumipan swears to reign with righteousness for the benefit and happiness of the Siamese people. To fulfill his promise to the people, King Bhumipan settles permanently in Thailand after the birth of his first daughter, Ubenrat, in 1951. The royal family would be completed with the birth of another son, Prince Rachi Ralangan, and two more daughters, Princess Siraton and Chulaporn. Even though he has a young family to raise, King Bhumipan knows there is much to be done as Thailand faces enormous challenges as a developing country. 
It is the 1950s, and Thailand is recovering from the devastation of World War II. People have fled their homes. Bombs have destroyed schools. The education system is in disarray. Most Thais do not even complete four years at school. A keen believer in lifelong learning, King Bhumipon knows that recovery and development of his country depends very much on the quality of education. He sees that the most disadvantaged communities in far-flung places have the least access to education. He starts by funding Chao Palum Upathan, School for Hill Tribe Children. And in 1976, he establishes the Pradabhut Foundation for students who have dropped out of the formal education system due to poverty. They are offered practical vocational training instead. Although the King's Foundation attracts students and funding, one challenge remains. Teachers are hard to come by in rural areas, and this hampers the quality of education in these locations. In 1995, King Bhumipong comes up with a solution using communication technology to bridge the gap. He starts the concept of distance learning and broadcasts lessons from Glai Khan Wong School Studio in Southern Thailand on 15 different channels. But education is only one of the problems Thailand faces. King Bhumipong is actually aware that malnutrition lies behind many of the country's health problems. He knows that Thais need an affordable source of protein to alleviate the problem. King Bhumipong believes the answer lies in fish breeding. Although fish is a good source of protein, Thai rivers have seen fish numbers dwindling over the years, and Thai fishermen are not used to breeding them. King Bhumipon experiments by turning his palace swimming pool at Chitlada Villa into a breeding ground for Plamotet, a type of tilapia. Later, the king breeds another type of fish, given by the Japanese emperor called Planin, or tilapia niclotica. And the fingerlings are distributed to the public to breed for consumption. The king doesn't limit his experiments to fish breeding. Keen to initiate projects to help his people become self-reliant, he transforms the grounds of his royal palace into a test lab for many of his development projects. He experiments with rice, wanting to find the best cultivation technique for his farmers. King Bhumipon tests different strains of rice from all over Thailand. He even develops a tractor known as the Iron Buffalo to mechanize the back-breaking process of plowing the fields. These cultivation methods, however, do not solve all the farmer's problems. Floods and droughts are a constant threat to this rice exporting nation every year, leaving farmers at the mercy of Thailand's erratic weather. Buddhism is an important function of Thai society, and the teachings have inspired generations of Thai monarchs. In 1956, King Bhumipon performs a rite of passage for Thai men by entering monkhood for 15 days. He is then ordained Bhumipalo Bhikkhu at the temple of the Emerald Buddha.
The king moves to Wat Borvor Vinet, where his great-grandfather, King Monkut, lived. He is now one among many thousands of barefoot monks walking the streets, collecting morning alms. Although Thai monarchs are Buddhist by tradition, the king regards all religions equally. He never fails to accept invitations to attend religious activities from other faiths, and even had a gift of a Quran translated into Thai. In 1958, a train leaves Chitlada station, carrying on board the king and queen on a mission to northeast Thailand. Since the 1950s, King Bhumipon has traveled to the farthest ends of Thailand to understand the living conditions of his people. His hands-on and personable approach would become a hallmark of his reign. In ancient Siam, commoners were not allowed to gaze at kings, let alone come into close contact with them. But King Bhumipon changed all that and went to great efforts to get closer to his people. He journeys around Thailand and into communities worlds apart from his palace life. He witnesses firsthand the stark reality of underdevelopment in Thailand. Roads are often unpaved and his car soon gets stuck on his way to Hua Hin in the south. Chatting to the villagers makes him realize the problems of having no proper roads. One of those is that delivery of fresh produce to the local markets is extremely difficult. A road is soon built for the villagers after King Bumipon leaves. Traveling to northeast Isan, King Bumipon sees how drought has plagued the province. Insufficient rainfall often limits farmers to only one crop a year. If that crop fails, starvation becomes a real possibility. The king knows that without water, man cannot survive, so his plan is to work on the weather. Rainmaking was novel at the time, but the king and his team decide to experiment with this technique in 1969. With the right humidity, clouds seeded with chemicals can produce rain. The king becomes known as a rainmaker after the success of this project. The people see him as a wise king invoking notions of a semi-divine monarch who could harness the weather for the benefit of the people. Every year, extreme weather conditions cause enormous hardship in rural Thailand. In 1962, Typhoon Harriet devastates 12 coastal provinces, leaving thousands of people homeless. The king sees the need for immediate relief aid and goes about raising funds. Money left over from his fundraising efforts are then used to establish the Raja Prachan Kra Foundation dedicated to providing relief to victims of disaster. In 2004, Thailand is struck by one of Asia's worst natural disasters. A giant Asian tsunami sweeps across the Indian Ocean, destroying everything in its path. Thailand is badly hit, with more than 5,000 people killed and thousands more homeless.
The foundation steps in to construct four schools for those children most affected by the disaster. Over the years, the number of projects initiated by King Bhumipan has kept growing. So much so that the Chaipatana Foundation was established in 1988 to help implement his initiatives. King Bhumipan is often seen with a camera around his neck during his visits around the country. Having developed a love for photography since young, the king documents the landscape as research for his projects. But the king's photographs are also often an expression of the world around him, featuring his love for music and those closest to him. And photography is not his only medium of expression. The king's interest in painting began when he was 10, but he only started painting seriously after 1959. He has completed around 100 paintings in realist and abstract styles, and often feature subjects close to his heart, such as Queen Sirikit. Yearly monsoons affect almost every part of Thailand. And not even Bangkok is spared as floods inundate the low-lying capital. Activities grind almost to a halt, and things come to a head on 19th September, 1995. Imminent floods once again threaten Bangkok. King Bhumipan is deeply concerned and meets with members of the royal household to solve the problem. King Bhumipan comes up with a solution inspired by a childhood memory. The king kept a monkey when he was young, and he noticed that the monkey could keep an entire bunch of bananas inside its cheek to chew and swallow later. King Bhumipong comes up with the Monkey Cheek Project to store excess water during heavy rainfall in grand basins and dikes that can be released back in the sea later. Thailand is safe for now, at least from the floods and typhoons. But a financial tsunami is headed east that will almost bring Southeast Asia to its knees and test the resilience of the Thai economy. Financial markets slump across Asia. In Thailand, companies become insolvent. The Thai bot can barely stay afloat, its value plummeting to an all-time low. The International Monetary Fund steps in with a bailout. King Bhumipan believes one of the causes behind this financial catastrophe in Thailand is an excess of greed producing unsustainable runaway economic growth. 
The king reminds people the importance of self-sufficiency, where each family can produce enough food for themselves and sell off the surplus. His ideas of self-sufficiency subsequently become known as the New Theory. The idea promotes small-scale agriculture, where each individual household divides their farmland into different zones for rice, animal farming, and other activities. Beginning in the 1970s, conflict in the Middle East causes extreme price fluctuations in oil. King Bhumipan knows that dependency on oil is not sustainable and its supply might run out in the long run. This sparked off the king's interest in developing sustainable energy and once again, he uses the ground of Chitlada Palace as a test lab. In 1986, ethyl alcohol from plants is successfully developed and used to run vehicles supporting royal projects. The experiment later includes solid alcohol for fuel. The grounds of Chitlada Palace are also well known as a demonstration farm. King Bhumipan develops a small milk dairy farm to show farmers how to produce milk for sale. The project is a success and so well received by farmers that they produce too much milk for the market. The king decides that nothing should go to waste and sets up a Suinducit milk powder plant to process excess milk to produce milk-based products such as powder tablets and cheese. In 2006, King Bhumipan celebrates 60 years on the throne, making him the longest reigning monarch in the world. It is a grand occasion as people turn up in royal colors to commemorate the occasion. Many are moved to tears, simply elated to be in the presence of their beloved king. A report from a magazine once said, in the 1940s, it might have been said that the Thai people respected Bhumipan because he was their king. Now in the 1990s, they respect their king because he is Bhumipan. The king is recognized internationally for his efforts in rural and sustainable development. He is awarded first UNDP Human Development Lifetime Achievement Award by former UN Secretary General Kofi Annan. Royals from all over the world converge in Thailand to celebrate this historic occasion. An exquisite banquet is held. Special effort was made to feature handicrafts from royal projects. The reality of age is catching up with the monarch and he has been in and out of Siri Ra Hospital due to ill health. But when he can, King Bhumipan always makes an effort to greet his people. In 2012, King Bhumipan makes a rare public appearance 
as the nation celebrates his 85th birthday. No one knows who will succeed the king at this point. But one thing is certain, the work of his foundations will continue under the care of Princess Siraton as she follows in her father's footsteps. Once the bespectacled prince, now the longest serving monarch in the world, King Bhumipan has affectionately come to be known as the father of the nation. And he will forever hold a place in Thai hearts as the man who ruled his country with faith, compassion, and love. He is, after all, the people's king.